What's going on guys? Picture of Dorian Gray Beckham here coming back at you with another video and today I'm doing another mock draft. Highly requested by many of you and if you guys are new here, might as well hit that subscribe button and um, you'll see more of these. I'm super excited. I obviously love the draft, all things NFL and football and today I am going to be giving you guys my pre-combine mock draft and now, okay, combine interviews have already started. They've been measured. Uh, for the most part, all the position groups. And as I'm recording this right now, it's on the morning of the first offensive line drills. Um, so, you know, the 40, vert jump, broad, three cone, everything like that, and on-field drills. So even though this is a pre-combine mock draft, for the most part, offensive linemen will not be in this. It is early. It is the morning. Um, it probably won't go out till I would say around midday, but hopefully this still does act as a pre-combine mock draft. We're going to jump right into it here, starting out with the first group, one to five, and that is going to be Josh Allen going number one. Now, Josh Allen would be better served as a tight end than a quarterback, opposed to Lamar Jackson moving to wide receiver, but nevertheless, there's a ton of hype around him going to the Browns number one. If we know anything about the Browns, they have a knack for taking horrific quarterback options in the draft. You look at Brady Quinn. There are too many to count, if we're being honest. But Josh Allen, he's very tall, uh, big hands, can throw far. So got to be a great quarterback, right? Not sure about it. Anyway, this is not my rankings of these prospects. It's where I think they're going to go and what teams are going to draft them. Number two, I have Saquon Barkley. A lot of hype around the Giants potentially taking him. A lot of people think the Giants should take a quarterback. I just don't want one as a Giants fan. Saquon Barkley is a generational player. Get another year with Eli, and then I think address quarterback next year where there are actually some better options at the quarterback position than in this particular draft. I would say don't take a Josh Rosen when you don't have to. And I thought about moving him at number one. Uh, but I, th I just thought the Browns might go Allen instead. Number three is Bradley Chubb. I think he would fit their defense pretty well. Go fit in right on the defensive line. It's a weakness for them. They do have some good talent there. Jabal Sherrod, Henry Anderson, not that bad, but they could use another edge presence. And I think Bradley Chubb would fit that very, very nicely. Number four, I have Minka Fitzpatrick, a defensive back out of Alabama. And the reason I have him as a defensive back opposed to a corner or a safety, it's I'm really not sure where he's going to fit in in the NFL. Whether he's a boundary corner or a nickel, or even a pure free safety, I'm not sure. It's all going to depend on where he goes. If he goes to the Browns, I would most like him as a nickel or a regular free safety spot. Most likely at free safety, purely because that's the Browns' biggest weakness on defense. Nickel cornerback isn't as much of a concern for me. And they do have good boundary options in Jason McCourty, in Brianne, Body Calhoun. But the problem is, and Derek Hindred was decent as an in-the-box safety last year, really bad in coverage over the top. But Jabril Peppers is not a free safety. He can't play that position, at least not from what we saw last year. Mick Fitzpatrick at free safety would work really, really well for the Browns and be an awesome option for them. And then to round out the top five, I do have Josh Rosen, I guess, falling to five when he's considered, I guess, pretty much um, the top quarterback in this class by a lot of people, although I do prefer Baker Mayfield. I just don't see him going. Um, Josh Rosen is my pick for number five. I don't know if the Broncos have the money to pursue Kirk Cousins as heavily as they might want to in free agency, considering the Vikings can throw more money at him. The New York Jets can throw more money at him. The Browns obviously can throw more money at him. So if the Broncos don't manage to get Kirk Cousins, which is a very good possibility in my mind, they would need to look quarterback in the draft, and Josh Rosen could be that option for them. I think he'd fit the system pretty well, and obviously, you know, Paxton Lynch isn't good. They traded up to get him. Trevor Simeon's not very good. He's a former, I believe, six-round draft pick. Let's not even talk about Brock Osweiler. Josh Rosen, I think, could be a very good option uh, for the Broncos at number five. As we move on into the next group, and that is from the Jets down to the Raiders, First up with the Jets going Sam Darnold, another quarterback going off the board. That's three in the top six for those who can't count very well. Sam Darnold, not a huge fan of him. I marked a uh, third round talent grade on him, but I think purely because of the hype around him 
and these teams in need of a quarterback and we don't know what Kirk Cousins is going to do yet I'm not going to build a mock draft around a team potentially signing a quarterback in free agency I just couldn't say yeah the Jets are a lock for Kirk Cousins because they obviously are not even if they do end up getting him it's not a lock right so Sam Darnold um, could be the option here for the New York Jets at number six they do need a quarterback Maybe they see Sam Darnold as that developmental player. I hope, I hope whoever takes Sam Darnold does not plug him in at number one uh, and to be their starting quarterback. I would hate that for, you know, his development. Next up, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Have them going Quentin Nelson, a guard out of Notre Dame. I think this is the sweet spot for Quentin Nelson. He is the best offensive lineman by a wide margin in this class. He is tremendous. Teams could even experiment with moving him to tackle. But as I talked about in the Cover 2 podcast with Moonlight Swami, which will be uploaded later today, that why would you play a guard at tackle and have him play at a Ricky Wagner level when you could potentially play that guard at guard and get him playing at a Zach Martin level? Do you want one of the best guards in the NFL or do you want a mid-tier tackle? And that's not saying Quentin Nelson can't play tackle. We just don't know. So why would you not play him at his best natural position fit? And that's where he's a dominant, dominant guard. Moving on to the Chicago Bears. Tremaine Edmonds, linebacker out of Virginia Tech. This guy is going to be a teenager on draft day. He will be drafted as a 19-year-old. He's six foot five, 250 pounds. He is an animal. Bears, they do need help at that next level of the defense. I thought about giving them a cornerback, but at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, they could end up franchising uh Kyle Fuller I think that's a likely happenstance so why not get a really really good sideline to sideline linebacker that could play Will maybe as an Anthony Barr type I think it's a really solid comp for him but we're going to move on to the 49ers Denzel Ward have them taking a cornerback out of Ohio State I think they should have taken Marshawn Lattimore last year and even though Solomon Thomas is a good player with potential Marshawn Lattimore clearly has developed into one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL after just one season. And I think maybe they go a different Ohio State cornerback this time. Help out that secondary. I think it's a very large need for them. Cornerback, especially more so than safety. I mean, you talk about Chiquisky Tart with the season he had last year before injury. It was phenomenal. You look also Adrian Colbert has potential. I just don't think they go safety here. I'm in on a cornerback. I'm going Denzel Ward out of Ohio State. Finishing out the top 10 with Roquan Smith. A linebacker out of Georgia. I think he's the best linebacker in this class. He probably projects more as a Sam or a Will than a Mike, which if you guys don't know that terminology, I don't really see him as an inside linebacker in a 4-3. He's probably going to play best on the outside. Um, or I think that's what teams might think. I think he could definitely play middle linebacker in the right scheme. It depends where he goes. But this guy has the awareness, the instincts, the athleticism. He is tremendous. His fluidity in coverage is amazing. So fluid, so sharp. Problem is he struggles a bit to shed blocks, which uh, is definitely a problem for an inside linebacker. But I think everything else about him is absolutely perfect. He's a guy that's going to test crazy at the combine. That could potentially boost his stock, but I think finishing out the top 10 is probably a pretty good spot for him. As we're going to move on into the next portion of this mock draft here. And that is starting off with the Dolphins taking Josh Jackson, a cornerback out of Iowa. Now, the Dolphins do have other needs, but considering I already have Tremaine Edmonds and Roquan Smith going off the board, I think they're pretty much out of play for a linebacker here. I don't think they'd go edge. I think Josh Jackson is probably the best fit. Now, they could go quarterback. I just, I'm going to play this one a little bit conservative and say, hey, maybe they give Ryan Tannehill another year. Maybe they even go after a quarterback. This is a team that could pursue Kirk Cousins as well. They could pursue Teddy Bridgewater, but I do have them going corner in Josh Jackson. Uh, former wide receiver, huge playmaker out there in the Big Ten. Josh Jackson is an absolute beast in terms of uh, going after the football. Great ball skills. He is very, very solid. One of the best cornerbacks in this class. Uh, and when you really come to think of it, it's just so close between... Um, Josh Jackson and Denzel Ward. They could really go either way. However, in this particular mock draft, I'm giving the Dolphins Josh Jackson. I'm saying that Denzel Ward does end up going a bit earlier. Moving on to the Bengals, Derwin James, a safety out of Florida State. He's a guy that's going to test really, really well at the combine. His broad, his vertical, I think those are going to be fantastic. I do think he's going to have a pretty fast 40 time as well. That will boost his stock. He's a guy that was so highly touted as a freshman at Florida State. 
offseason and sophomore year and then definitely bounce back as a junior to be very very productive i think the hate on him on twitter is absolutely ridiculous he is an amazing athlete and he's shown the instincts the coverage ability and he's a hard hitter this guy can play in the box i think he can play over the top as well i think the Bengals do need safety help very very badly and derwin james could fit in perfectly moving on to the redskins clearly no longer need a quarterback i did have a quarterback going to them in my last mock draft i think it was baker mayfield obviously now with the chiefs trading for alex smith and then signing him to a four-year deal there's absolutely no reason for them to take a quarterback so deron Payne, a defensive tackle out of alabama is the look could definitely play nose but he has the athleticism um, and the, the athletic profile, really, to be a dominant defensive tackle in this league. It's back-to-back -back Alabama defensive linemen for the Redskins. Um, and actually, I think it's, they take, uh, or excuse me, they took another Alabama player as well. I think in the second round last year, I can't remember who they took. I really can't. I just remember they took an Alabama player. We'll get to that in a second. But Jonathan Allen Super, super talented defensive lineman. They took him last year. And Deron Payne, I think, is very, very similar in terms of overall ability. Um, that was it, Ryan Anderson? Not Ryan Anderson. Hold on. I, I'm sorry to be like kind of weird in the middle of this mock draft. 2016 Redskins draft class. But yeah, Deron Payne um, is such an athletic beast. And a lot of people probably don't realize just how athletic he is. Um, and it, it's you know, just insane to me, because this is a guy, and not, not that I really care, it is Ryan Anderson, by the way, um, not that I care about scoring a touchdown as a defensive lineman, but he scored a touchdown as a defensive lineman on offense that just goes to show a little bit about his athleticism, uh, kind of on, on some trick play there, it was kind of fun to watch, um, but even on defense, you can see him, he just shouldn't be able to move the way he does for an interior defensive lineman, Really, really fun to watch. I love defense. Deron Payne is going to be a really, really fun player to watch. Moving on to the Green Bay Packers. I've had them taking a cornerback, but considering the cornerbacks, um, the one and two cornerbacks at the top of everyone's board for the most part are off the board, I don't think they go cornerback here. You think about Carlton Davis, maybe a Dante Jackson, G or Alexander. I don't think he's going to go this high. I don't think any of them will. I have them taking Marcus Davenport, a defensive end out of UTSA really really amazing athletic profile he is gigantic his frame is huge his athleticism is tremendous his burst off the edge tremendous um smaller sample size and considering he played at utsa i do have concerns with the small time school but when you have someone that is that athletically gifted from a smaller time school i don't think it matters you look at khalil mack out of buffalo buffalo is not exactly an lsu or in Alabama, or even, you know, in Oklahoma, one of those, you know, big time schools, and I went to the Big 12, whatever, the Big 12 is kind of, it depends, like, regardless, Marcus Davenport, I think he can definitely turn out to be a good player, he's going to get generate more buzz, the more that he plays, the more that he has a great combine, well, not plays, but the more he has a good combine pro day, his athleticism is going to carry his draft stock, and top 15 is probably a pretty good spot for him as we're going to move on to the last pick of that group with the Arizona Cardinals. I have them taking Baker Mayfield, a quarterback out of Oklahoma. He is the best quarterback in this draft class. I don't care about Rosen, Darnold, Jackson, Allen, Rudolph, Falk, whoever you think. And not that Rudolph or Falk should even be in that conversation. Um, but Baker Mayfield is just the best. And I don't care about his completion percentage. I don't care about any of that i care about his poise in the pocket his arm talent is right up there with josh allen it, like it's not a huge stretch from josh allen to baker mayfield in terms of arm talent baker mayfield is so much more accurate so much more decisive with the football he is an incredible player definitely the best quarterback in this draft class and i think by a fairly wide margin cardinals absolutely need a quarterback carson palmer retires Baker Mayfield, I think, makes perfect sense for the Cardinals at this juncture as they're going to move on to the Ravens taking Calvin Ridley, wide receiver out of Alabama. Calvin Ridley is tremendous. I think he'd be a top 10 player in uh, most draft classes. However, due to the fact that he is going to be turning 24 before the start of next season, that is a concern as a receiver. However, 
he is the best receiver in this draft class. The Ravens could definitely use a help. If Calvin Ridley's still on the board, which I think he likely will be at this point, Definitely could see him going to the Ravens here as we move on to the Los Angeles Chargers taking Avita Vea, a nose tackle out of Washington. He's a guy that's going to be about 340 to 350 pounds when he's playing. And he could end up running sub five in the 40 yard dash. Just goes to show his athleticism. He is a really, really amazing player. And it's just, would a team value him at nose tackle enough to take him in the first round? I think yes. What do you look at? with the Chargers and say, okay, this is what the Chargers are missing. You look at their secondary safeties, they're fine. You have Trey Boston, who's at least decent. Jaleel Adai is at least decent. You could even move Desmond King back there. Cornerbacks, absolutely they have no issues. They have the best group of cornerbacks in the NFL um, based on pure quantity of their quality. Desmond King, a healthy Jason Verrett, Casey Hayward, Trevor Williams. That is an insane group of four cornerbacks at linebacker all right it's a bit more of a concern there but who are you going to take at this juncture Rashawn Evans I don't think he's going to go this high both of the top linebackers are off the board I don't think there's any way they would take that and then at the edge rusher you have two beasts in Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa but what's missing defensive interior Vita Vea could come in and be so so dominant help out that defensive line the Chargers would have one of the best defenses in the NFL if they could solidify just a few more positions. And we're going to move on to the Seahawks. You look at their glaring holes. It's on the offensive line. Halfback is another one. Potentially safety if they deal Earl Thomas. Camp Chancellor might retire. They're looking to deal Richard Sherman potentially as well, but I don't think cornerback would go. You got to look on the offensive line. It's a huge, huge weak point. Russell Wilson is just so good that it hasn't mattered as much as it definitely should they need to upgrade on the offensive line. Mike McGlinchey, an offensive tackle out of Notre Dame, could be exactly what they need, as we'll take another offensive lineman. Billy Price to the Cowboys, a guard out of Ohio State. You say Cowboys going offensive line in the first round, they've got the best offensive line in football. Okay, sure, I understand that point of view, but since Ronald Leary left to Denver, they haven't had that same offensive line. It hasn't been as good. Uh, Jonathan Cooper, I think, was their guard last year, and he just wasn't anything special um, on the left side. You need a better option. Billy Price out of Ohio State, I think, could absolutely be that option, and they've shown no, hesita uh, no hesitation. I was going to say hesitancy, but I'm like, I, don't know, I just want to go hesitation instead. Uh, that's a breakdown on my vernacular right there. Um, but yeah, they've shown no hesitation on taking offensive linemen in the first round as they took a center in Travis Frederick in the first round. They've taken a guard in Zach Martin in the first round, a tackle in um, uh, Tyron Smith in the first round. How about another one? Billy Price, guard out of Ohio State. Plug him in on that left side and get that dominance back on that offensive line as we're going to wrap things up with the Lions here. A lot of people I've seen have them taking Sony Michelle. I think Darius Geis is a better option um, for this team. And Matt Patricia being their new head coach, Maybe he'd lean towards a Sony Michelle uh, based on what they've done in New England. But I think Darius Geis is the better player. I think he's a better running back option. And I think he does end up sneaking in the first round. And I think the Lions would be well served to take a player of his caliber. Really, really excited to see what he can do at the next level. As we move on, back-to-back -back picks for the Bills here. And I should say, if you guys are still listening and paying attention up to this point, I obviously have no trades in this uh, mock draft for the sake of continuity. I will be coming out with a trade series of mock drafts eventually, but for now we're just going to keep it pure. Uh, and back to back pick for the Bills Sam Darnold and Carlton Davis, quarterback out of USC and cornerback out of Auburn, respectively. If Sam Darnold's still on the board at this point for a quarterback needy team like the Bills who don't like Tyrod Taylor, Nathan Peterman obviously is not starting caliber. I think they would take a Sam Darnold here still being on the board. And then Carlton Davis. Uh, decent speed for a big bodied corner out of Auburn help out that secondary I think add another great piece and you say hey they have Tredavious White they have EJ Gaines why do they need another cornerback EJ Gaines is best served in the nickel Tredavious White was a phenomenal boundary corner last year take another cornerback in Carlton Davis to fit your base nickel package and that's exactly what they could do in taking Carlton Davis as we're going to move on to the Los Angeles Rams who I have taking Arden Key a defensive end out of LSU very good player. His production was down last year, but he has an athletic freak. He's going to test very, very well at the combine. 
and considering the Rams want to move on from Robert Quinn, I think they'll likely release him if they haven't already by the time this video comes out, which it likely has not happened. Um, Arden Key definitely would fit in well with that defense, that attacking 3-4. Play him as an edge rusher, obviously, or a 3-4 outside linebacker. I think he'd be awesome. Moving on to the Panthers, I have them taking Cortland Sutton, a wide receiver out of SMU pictured on the screen. He is a very, very good player. Seeing him going as high as the top 10, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to more likely fit into this range, 20 to 30, somewhere uh, in that specific spot, or non-specific, I guess. I mean, it's somewhat. It, regardless, Panthers need quarter, excuse me, receiver help for their quarterback in Cam Newton. Devin Funches is a little bit of a question mark for me. I think he fits more as a joker role, like tight end wide receiver hybrid like Evan Ingram. I don't like him as a pure wide receiver, but he's their best receiver. So, I mean, like, what do you do? They need more help for Cam Newton. Cortland Sutton, a big body with good speed. He would be a tremendous option. Could see Christian Kirk going here maybe, but I've gone Cortland Sutton out of SMU um, as we're going to move on to the Titans, who I have taking Rashawn Evans, an inside linebacker out of Alabama. Very, very good player. I like him quite a bit. With Avery Williamson likely going to sign a deal elsewhere and not remaining with the Tennessee Titans. With Wesley Woodyard over 30, I think they do need to upgrade at this position. Uh, and for their 3-4 defense, they're going to need an inside linebacker anyway when Avery Williamson goes elsewhere. Rashawn Evans could fit the bill very, very well as we're going to move on here to the next portion. Isaiah Wynn, a guard out of Georgia. I have mocked to the Atlanta Falcons here. Very, very good player. Explosive, good athleticism. That's what you like. We're going to see how he tests at the combine. But Falcons do need help on that offensive line, particularly at guard. I think they're pretty much fine at tackle. Ryan Schrader's awesome when healthy. Jake Matthews is awesome. Alex Mack is awesome. But they have weakness at the guard position. Isaiah Wynn could help out very, very well. Keep the Georgia talent in state. Keep him uh, going to the Atlanta Falcons. As we have the Saints taking a quarterback, Lamar Jackson out of Louisville. I think this is my first big shock in the mock draft. Um, with Drew Brees being a free agent, I think they're absolutely going to re-sign him. But what are they going to re-sign him to? A one, maybe a two-year deal? I think a two-year deal is most likely going to happen. But a two-year deal for Drew Brees, who's 39 years old, he's obviously not your long-term option anymore. He is still your franchise-level quarterback, but he is not your long-term option. How deadly could a quarterback like Lamar Jackson be playing under Drew Brees for a year or two. That would be absolutely filthy. When you have a quarterback like him, a playmaker, with such tremendous athleticism, and I see a lot of talk about him going to play wide receiver. That's a ridiculous notion. His arm talent is insane. The only problem I have with Lamar Jackson is his consistency and accuracy. I guess it's kind of two, but it's, you know, one and the same. Um, he just isn't consistent enough for me. I think he gets lazy on some throws, and then he'll astound you with others. He is a quarterback. I think he could be a very good quarterback as well. I don't think he's an RG3 type. I don't think he's Braxton Miller or Terrell Pryor, the way some people were trying to tell me in my uh, stream the other day. They're just totally different. The arm talent from Lamar Jackson's insane. If he can develop consistency and better mechanics in the pocket, I think he's going to be phenomenal. Get Drew Brees coaching him up. And the Saints could be looking deadly with one of the best playmakers we've ever seen at the college level. Moving on to the Steelers, Leighton Vander Esch, linebacker out of Boise State. This is a guy that's getting a lot of hype recently. I think the Steelers really need a linebacker, especially in the wake of Ryan Shea's year. We're all hoping he gets better. We're all hoping he plays again. But it's not looking great at this particular moment. Um, Leighton Vander Esch would actually fit that system really, really well. He's a surprisingly athletic linebacker. Uh, with good sideline to sideline range instincts, could fit the Steelers system really, really well. And next, I have the Jaguars taking Auden Tate, a receiver out of Florida State. Very, very good player. We're going to keep him in state, going to Jacksonville. And with Allen Robinson potentially hitting free agency, and I think most likely hitting free agency and not re signing with the Jaguars or not getting franchise tagged by the Jaguars, I think Auden Tate could be an excellent replacement. Very, very similar size, similar abilities, and if Auden Tate tests well, I think he'll definitely get into the first round, and the Jaguars could be a perfect landing spot for him as we're going to move on to the Vikings. Taking Dante Jackson, cornerback out of LSU. They do need cornerback help. Um, obviously, Xavier Rhodes is a very good option at cornerback, 
but old Terrence Newman and free agent Trey Waynes, what else do they have there? They need another cornerback. Dante Jackson out of LSU could fit the bill very, very well as we're going to move on to the final two picks of the Super Bowl matchup here with the Patriots and the Eagles. First offensive tackle I have going off the board is Orlando Brown um, with this particular group. I did have Mike McGlinchey going a bit earlier. Um, as of recording this right now, I have seen him a bit at the combine in terms of running the 40 and um, the drills as well as the bench press. And now his bench press was awful. He put up 14 reps, and I know this is pre-combine. That's all, like just a little bit of actual combine during. Um, not for any other positions in the offensive lineman. Orlando Brown ran like a 5-4-6-40, which is atrocious. And he put up 14 reps on the bench press, which is not good. A lot of that is to do with his long arms, and it's more, uh, I talked about it a lot on Twitter with Swami about functional strength versus, you know, strength in the gym, weight room, um, and Orlando Brown has more functional strength. He is solid. He's way better on tape than actually he's performing uh, at the combine. So I think he still will end up being a first round pick. Patriots who do need help at the offensive tackle position uh, could fit in very, very well. I think just Nate Solder isn't playing up to that level anymore. And maybe, you know, you look to upgrade over Marcus Cannon. But I think Orlando Brown at left tackle would be a great option for them. And then I have the Eagles taking Connor Williams, an offensive tackle out of Texas. Hook him horns, of course. Uh, Connor Williams, very good player, was a little bit better before injury uh, his sophomore year, but his junior year, he did play decent enough. I think that he still will end up being uh, one of the first offensive tackles off the board. Eagles do need an upgrade at the position at left tackle. I know Hal Vitae played pretty well, um, but he did struggle early on, and he did play better near the end of the season, and he was you know, it was good that he did for the Eagles because they, you know, may not have won a Super Bowl if he didn't play as well as he did down the stretch. However, I think Connor Williams would be a definite upgrade over him, a long-term option at left tackle. I could easily see them going a different direction here, but for the purpose of this mock draft, I'm going Connor Williams out of Texas. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think down below. Let me know who you think is going to impress you in the combine. We know some of your players from your favorite colleges, but that's going to be it for this mock draft. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Shit don't run well.